When it comes to fitness and health, the following is extremely important to understand. The best results are often not visible. Most of the best results you'll ever get if you follow the journey of fitness and health won't show up on the scale or the mirror. They happen on the inside. And those, of course, lead to the visible results. Now, coaches and trainers, learn this, understand this, and teach this and coach this. Everybody else, pay attention. The stuff that's not visible is often the most important. God, that, this is so difficult, though, because, I mean, including ourselves, almost everybody gets started in working out for, right. for yeah. the, the the visual stuff. The visual, the aesthetic honest, I mean, reasons. you have, there's a subset of people that uh, the doctor told them to and, you know, yeah. it's health. But for the most part, I, I would say 80%. Would you, would you say it's a fair number? Oh, probably more. Yeah, I'd say at least yeah. 80% yeah. of clients that came in to get a membership or buy personal training it was something physical they wanted to see different, right? Totally. Or lose it, a significant amount of weight or sculpt their body a certain way, build muscle. Totally. One of the the, the things I figured out probably oh got at least 10 years into my career um, when I was trying to figure out how to keep people consistent, because I, I ran into the same problem that all coaches and trainers run into, which is they'll, they'll be consistent when they're with you. And then when they're not with you, they're not consistent or mm. they'll be with you for a while and they'll stop and then you won't see them again. And, and, you know, I was really, really dedicated to like, how can I, how can I turn everyday people into people that want to do this for the rest of their life? 10 years into my career, I realized it was telling people or teaching people or coaching people on how to like identify the non-visible results. So, mm -hmm. cause people, what happens is when you're, when your eyes are so focused on the scale or the mirror, it's almost like, um, it's like that video. You guys ever watch that video? It's famous now, but there's like uh, people throwing a basketball back and forth and you have to count how many times they pass the ball. In the meantime, a guy in a gorilla suit walks yeah. Oh, yeah, behind yeah. the background yeah, yeah. and, and, and then, and it literally fools you. It's like, okay, did you see the guy in the gorilla suit? And you say, no. And then they replay the video and literally right in front of you, a dude time. walks yeah. by in a gorilla suit and you just didn't see it because you were so focused on the guy, on the people passing the ball. Yeah. Well, this is what happens to clients and to ourselves. They're so focused on the scale in the mirror that they completely miss the fact that they feel better. They have better mood, better sleep. Their energy is better. Their outlook is better, that they're not as impulsive, like all these really important things that are, you should focus on. So I learned how to like, you know, talk to clients about this and point them out and have them realize, you know, it's funny because I would say things like, you know, how's your sleep been? And they'll say, oh, it's fine. I'm like, okay, well, was it like it was, you know, when we first started? And then they'll think about it and be like, you know what's mm. funny? Is I haven't woken up in the middle of the night like I used to. I'm like, well, that that definitely could be a result of sleeping. And then they now they they pay attention to that, oh my God, my sleep is better. Yeah. Or my mood is better. Or, you know, you don't seem as uh as as agitated. Yeah. I don't crash out. in the middle of the day anymore. Yeah. yeah. It's a very strange. I have all this energy that uh, came out of Yeah, you have to point it out. Otherwise, it's like it's just uh the waiting and the delaying of until they get the physical change that they've been seeking, like a laser focused person. So, oh, I yeah. think this is actually one of the things that r separates the really good trainers from the great trainers totally, is yeah. you start to piece this together mm -hmm. that, you know, you can't give anybody physical results uh, overnight or even in a really short period of time. I mean, it's very difficult to see r real physical change in the first month or two of training somebody. It's just going to be very incremental. And so you, once you learn to communicate those other things for them to pay attention to and get them excited and bought into that, it really makes a huge difference on on one uh, their adherence and mm. sticking with you, and or for from the trainer's perspective on a business side, the ability to re-sign them, yeah. because a lot of people have this misconception of I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to change my diet, I'm going to start working out, and I'm going to see like week over week, I'm going to yeah. see these physical changes. And if you don't, as a coach and trainer, set the the, the table properly for this person they're going to be really discouraged and the likelihood that they continue with you is, is really, really low. Yeah. And the irony is if they do see those physical changes too quickly and too fast, you know, they're probably completely probably off wasn't track right. and yeah. it's unsustainable and uh, you know, they're setting themselves up for failure. So it's, it's, it's a tough one because you want, you do have to pull back and kind of slow them down sometimes, but highlight all the other benefits. So would, it still gives them motivation. Wouldn't you guys say that was probably one of the greatest challenges when you were first were building your business? Yes. Because there, you have to understand as a, a trainer, you, you, you only eat by making sure you have a client book, a list of right. uh, people that are showing up on a regular basis. And they are telling you, I want this. I want to lose this. I want to look this way. And so there's this part of you that's just like, I need to show them 
right. something yeah. so that they can. And so you're 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 wrestling with that for the first you know three to five As years. A young trainer, that's what you're really focused on. Oh so yeah, got to get them something so they see, so they want to buy in and keep going. Yeah, right? it's. Uh, it, and by the way, it could be as subtle as like I, I I just remembered one story where it was really profound for this client. Where, you know, they were doing really well. They had issues with impulsive eating and, you know, like most of us. And they had done really well. And then they had come back from uh, a weekend and they had gone out with their friends over the weekend. So, she, you know, she comes in. I'm like, oh my God, how was it with your friends? Oh, you know, uh, it was good, but <clears throat> man, I really messed up. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, well, you know, afterwards we got dessert. And, uh, you know, I know I'm trying to go real low sugar, but I had a dessert. So I'm really just disappointed in myself. So, okay, well, how'd you feel? afterwards like, well i kind of felt bad about myself and whatever so well, how much did you eat she goes well i only ate a small piece so what would you normally have done and she goes oh my god no, i would have eaten five times as much until i made myself sick she's like i literally had four bites and then i stopped and then she realized like what a profound yeah. change she had made so she was already stuck on the fact that she screwed up mm. but then she realized in the context of herself like i only had four bites normally i would eat like the whole thing right, right. and feel yeah. terrible about myself and so it's significant yeah and so she was able to realize the the changes that she was making and when you do that it's so profound and you want to talk about consistency i mean if you don't pay attention to the non-visible first off even if you do everything perfect the visible aren't consistent and they don't they won't continue forever you're yeah. just you're not going to build muscle forever you're not going to lose body fat forever obviously there's going to be a limit What's going to keep you going is the invisible, is the understanding of all For the sure. other values. Um, and this is very important. It's not communicated enough. You know, people think that the happiness comes from the weight loss. The truth is you feel the happiness first mm -hmm. and then the weight loss uh, starts to follow, yeah, yeah. you know, so. Today's YouTube giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win... We'll let you know in the comment section. Also, Black Friday starts now. 60% off all programs, everything, and bundles. 60% off, no holds barred. Buy as many programs as you want. Buy as many bundles as you want. 60% off. Repeatedly works. I promise you. Use it as many times as you want. We do this sale once a year, and then we don't do it for the rest of the year. So take advantage. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. T-shirt time! And it's t-shirt time. Oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. We have three winners this week. One for Apple Podcasts, two for Facebook. The Apple Podcast winner is RachFace01. And for Facebook, we have Damian Rubinick and TJ Doyle. All three of you are winners. Send a name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. Yep. How uh, how have you guys been doing sleep wise and stuff like that? Yeah, I was thinking about this the other day <laughs> that this is the most uh, travel and different time zones I've spent the night in in that short a period of time. Like yeah. literally in what two weeks time, we've been in four different time zones. Yeah, no, spent, the, yeah, spent the night in four different time zones. I don't know where I am. The, yeah. I mean that I you know really the people that have to do that a lot, I have a lot of respect for the ability for you to, to do that. And, and main, I like, I I'm barely feeling like I'm getting back to normal. And then we did Dude. Arizona. And so like, man, I feel like it's been a rough. Well, so trip off this, right? Yeah. So I, I fall asleep exhausted at night. Cause I'm just so tired. Yeah. But, um, and, and you know, I've been kind of battling snoring and it wakes up Jessica and it's like really frustrating. And I figured out ways to like keep it from happening. But lately, I've just been snoring like crazy. No matter what device I use or tool. Because you're I so just, exhausted. No, yeah. I thought that's what it was. Maybe because uh, I'm so exhausted. Do you still do the tape? I, yeah, mouth tape. And I, I have this mouthpiece that pulls my lower jaw forward. And I'm just and, I'm, and she's like, I'm like, how bad is it? She's like, it's like worse than ever mm. with everything. I'm like, oh, my God, what is going on? So I was trying to figure out. And you guys know me. I can be like a sleuth on, on Google, right? So I'm trying <laughs> to figure out, yeah. am I heavier? I weighed myself. I'm like, eh, I'm only like a couple pounds heavier. It can't be that. But I could feel in my throat, I can feel the the palate and the muscles of the that cause snoring, almost like they're either more inflamed or they get more in the way, right? Mm -hmm. And I can even feel it in my voice. So I'm like, this is really strange. I'm like, what have I been doing differently since I've been traveling? You know what I've been doing? Mm. I've been eating gluten almost on a daily basis. Mm. So I'm like, wait a minute, let me look this up. 
Mm. Gluten and sleep apnea or gluten and snoring. Did you guys know it's established? This isn't like... <clears throat> this isn't like theory. This isn't like wellness. Like, like, you know how it takes the wellness space. Like, they'll say something for a while and the medical space will follow up. Yeah. No, no, no. There's studies. That gluten... Really? In, yes. In people who are sensitive to gluten will increase snoring or will affect sleep <laughs> apnea in huh. people. That's exactly, that's what I've been doing. I've been getting away with it, or so I thought. Because yeah. I'm having some, I'm like, I'm not that bad. I think huh. I'm okay. Are you sure because your tongue didn't just grow? No <laughs> big. <laughs> it happens, dude. Look into it. Look at your fat head. <laughs> big fat tongue. <laughs> 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 Disgusting. You talk so much now, you've really been building it's it up. Yeah. hypertrophy. Yeah, shit out of my hypertrophy tongue. <laughs> no, it's dude. my theory. No, I, I, I'm reading about it, and I'm like, holy, you know what it is, is the, the you know, the peptide BPC. Like my gut health is like almost impervious. So of course what I do, like most people, is oh I can get away with it. So I'll just keep going. Yeah. But apparently I can't. So it's the gluten dude. So I'm cutting I'm have, and I've had a little bit almost every day since we were yeah. in London. I, oh. I mean I've I also ran out of my mellow too, which doesn't help the cause for me because I I I always know when I when I don't do something, I always am reminded of the significance. Right. When you get consistently using some of that and you have these kind of ebb and flows of like better nights, less yeah. less good nights to sleep or whatever. Yeah, and I'm still consistently oh. taking that. And then I fall off of it. I fell off of it when we traveled. And then yeah. when I came back, I only had one night of it. And then I didn't so have So my it. dad, so we had our family over yesterday, which I'll tell you guys in a little bit. But um, my dad was telling me how he gets restless at night. It's almost like restless leg syndrome, but not quite, where he just feels antsy. Mm -hmm. And so uh gave him the mellow, took care of it. Yeah. So he must have a magnesium deficiency, I think. Yeah. Like you. Yeah, for sure. You know, they, they just came out with some, uh, so it was like an immunity product that they just came out. Immunity yeah. Hero, I think. Yeah, 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 I was taking that consistently. I, I don't know if I told you guys, but my son had strep throat and it was like, we, we quarantined them off and like, wow. and this is like right when we came back from London, I'm like, oh no, dude, I'm like at my most vulnerable, you know, I was like super worried about it, but everybody else in the family was doing it and, and none of us uh, uh, got it. So, oh, wow. Yeah. I'm yeah. reading it right now. Must have helped. This so it has echinacea in it, which that's like a staple thing that yeah. Katrina and her family always take. I think astragalus, elderberry. It has elderflower. Elderflower. Yeah. Is that like the same thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I haven't tried it yet, but she was sick, and so she was she was taking. Did it, it help her? Yeah, she did. I was doing it consistently all day. Like, wow. You know, taking drops. So. She's always taking echinacea though, so I think that's what sold her. Echinacea's she saw that was in there, and then she was like, echinacea. Oh. If I take too much of it. Uh, can make me feel, I can get more sensitive to allergies because hmm. I think it does ramp up the immune system. So if I take too much of it, I'll get like, 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 uh, there's certain types of like, uh, oh, interesting. That'll bother me. Uh -huh. oh, interesting. I've just noticed that myself, mm. but so, so we had a bunch of people over yesterday. So Jessica has been reading, I got to find the name of the book. She literally told me if you forget the name of the book on the podcast, I'll be so mad. So I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm going to find it right now. <laughs> I know. It's a, okay. Don't it's called the up. common rule by Justin Whitmell early. Okay. The common rule. Common rule. Oh, rule. Yeah. And essentially it's about how to make your life uh, more Christian or godly or how to create these practices. And so there's pretty cool stuff in there, but they're very like objective practices. And one of them is, talks about hospitality versus entertainment. So entertainment, you invite people over, house is perfect. You made all the food, you whatever. He talks about hospitality, which is just open the door. Open the door, people bring food. We all work together. We all oh, clean together. We all, so she created this like, like open invitation on Sundays. You guys were in the yeah, thread, yeah, I saw that. Where yeah. anybody's invited on Sundays yeah. and come over and bring food or not and we'll hang out and have a great time. So what's, what's the theory on it being just kind of open-ended versus having structure to it? What's it's communal. The it's uh, Sabbath. It's like Sabbath. Like you're not really working. You're doing stuff together. It's not like I'm here trying to like- Entertain. Entertain. It's like we're just all coming together. And it's also- uh, from this sense, it's relaxed. It's more relaxed because sometimes you don't, you don't have people over. You're not really yeah, no, that's, that's pressure, interesting because yeah. sometimes, you know, we entertain a lot and sometimes I feel like, you know, you don't I don't get a chance to, yeah. And sometimes I don't want to just because I'm like, it can be exhausting because you're entertaining because yeah. you're like putting on basically an event for people. Yeah. And so sometimes when I, like I could have people over, I'm like, ah, eh, you know what? I don't feel like entertaining tonight. I don't feel like I, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. So well, she literally put on all the, uh, on, on the Sunday threads, like everybody. That we that we <coughs> love and care about. So it could be crazy. Fifty people could uh, be two people. That'd be wild. And it's impromptu. You Everybody don't got to tell the us same idea at once. Yeah. Yeah. You don't got to tell us. Just show up, and then we'll make it work, and we'll just all work together. And that's exactly what happened. We had her friend Nicole and Martine. Well, they have four kids. 
my brother and his wife, they have two kids, and then my parents. And so, every, and then afterwards, everybody was cleaning, everybody brought food. I wonder who that would be more challenging for with Katrina and I. Like, who, mm. like, out of you two, who's, who is that more challenging for to be like, hey, just let's not overthink it. Let's just let it happen. <sighs> is that harder for you or her? Probably her because the house is her, dom her domain. So okay. she feels very, you know, like if the house wants it clean. And it's, yes. Uh, yeah. She's presenting the home and she, she, that's her, that's her domain. But, um, it worked out. Yeah. That's probably more difficult super for well. me too. I yeah. Think. And I gotta tell you guys. So my, my brother comes over with his two kids. So he's got a four month old now, just the cutest little, by the way, this kid is so adorable and just loves Jessica. She was holding him and he's just like staring into her eyes and I'm like, uh oh, don't get any ideas, Jessica. <laughs> She's like, oh, I love him. He's so cute. I wish, I wish Dahlia was four months old. I don't know. So cute. But anyway, his son, who's two, is his clone with his energy and personality. So my brother, when he was little, it was like he, he was like he had, um, like he he had a nuclear reactor inside of him. He never ran out of energy ever when he was little, and, unless he was asleep. He was climbing the walls, running, breaking shit everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. His son is literally, in, my, in fact, the joke is he doesn't know how to walk because all he does is run. He just, <laughs> just running, going nuts. So he comes over and my son, Aurelius, is three. And, you know, two and three-year-olds don't like to necessarily share too yeah. much. <laughs> That's so we, the age when they're figuring oh, out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we got for his birthday, we got him that car that he can drive in. Mm -hmm. And that's like his car. He's like an old man with his, like, like his, his muscle car. Like, don't touch my car. So I'm like, hey, Angelo's coming over. He's like, he can't touch my car. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> right just away. Then we won't play with your car. No, I want to play. I'm like, if you play with it in front of him, then we got to let him share. That's not fair. I don't want I don't want him in my car. I don't want anybody in my car. <laughs> and so, uh, here we go, right? So they come over. Sure enough, you know, he wants to get in his car. They start fighting over it. And so I'm like, all right. So my brother takes this. And my brother's like the most patient dad. I love watching him. He's so patient. His son's throwing a fit like two-year-olds do. And he's just so patient, so calm. It's so cool watching that. But then finally we got them to agree so they could take turns. But every time we'd switch them out, there was a tantrum. So his son would drive it, you know? Uh -huh. And then we're like, okay, one more lap. And then it's, you know, really turn. Oh, and then we'd stop. Yeah. And then this is the funniest thing. So, and his son's fucking strong like he is. Like he's got my brother's genetics, right? So he's two, but he's a giant. He's bigger than Aurelius is. And he's holding on the steering wheel and he looks at his dad. And, it, and, and my, my brother's like, all right, come on. He won't let go of the steering wheels. <laughs> so he's he's trying to peel him off the steering wheels, like literally picking up the car. So my brother like peel his hands and we're cracking up. I'm like, bro, he's like you, dude. He's too strong, bro. <laughs> then, he, then he took his hands off and then he wedged his legs under the seat. <laughs> Couldn't get him out, dude. Oh it was my, so funny. Oh, my God. It was so – and you know what's funny? They were fighting the whole time. Nicole has two little boys too, and they're just all like fighting. They're all the same age. And they're just – it's like Lord of the Flies, right? And yeah. So, and we're trying to intervene only when we need to see if they'll figure it out. What do you think happens? Literally thirty minutes before everybody needs to leave, they're best friends, and then they cry because then they want to be separated. Yeah. Like you guys were fighting for four uh, yeah, hours, yeah. and now you don't want them to go home. That's how it's it like. Goes. Don't yeah. leave. Yeah. It really yeah. highlights. You know, I, I remember watching that phase like with Max, right? The the two and three for sure is a lot of that, right? They're they're really figuring that out. How valuable it is for kids to have like uh, to also hang out with kids like three or four years older than they them. have no problems with them yeah i know at all it's so in that rate if they're the same age two to three hell all hell breaks yep. if it's two and five totally fine yeah like the five-year-old has gone through that enough and is more patient it's so weird it is or so even when they're really little because it's four month old yeah we bring him in in the carrier and i really is just so enthralled with him he's over he's like kissing him and touching him but then with angelo his cousin is like a year younger they're like trying to kill each other <laughs> literally at one point uh, this is hilarious. Uh, Angelo hits Nicole's son, right? So and he's kind of like holding his face, and then and then Angelo walks away. So before we can intervene or do anything, Nicole's son walks up and goes to Angelo, looks him around the face, and then wham hits him in the face. <laughs> and they're both rubbing their faces, We're like, "Well, I guess you guys are <laughs> figuring it out." You know? <laughs> yeah. Nobody was crying; they just kind of like hit each <laughs> other, like sorting oh. it out themselves. And then they the played. Old school. Yeah, then ten seconds later, they played with cars. Oh, yeah. uh, it's so funny. Hey, today I know we have Viore. Is that a Viore hoodie you're wearing? It is. It is. It is. That is? Yeah. I didn't know they, so I'm, this is not Viore, and I love this, like, that we happen to be wearing yeah, something similar today. And similar. I, and I thought I saw the Viore logo on that. I didn't even know they made that. Yeah, I got I it. I bet you don't know the name, though, right? You, you, oh, man. I went to Santana Row to get it. 
Uh, okay. Yeah, because they have a store there. Yeah, that must be new. Maybe Doug, while we're on this, you could look it up because I'm really curious. I love it's that really, style of like kind of a yeah, lighter, it's comfy. Lighter it's a hoodie. it's a lighter um it's a lighter sweater, so it's not super thick, but it's really comfortable. And there's no like pocket in the front or whatever. Sometimes I like pockets, sometimes I don't. Is that an XL or large? This one's XL. So that is XL. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I wonder if I could go a little go up a little. I think that's the Stratotech hoodie. Oh, pull it up. Yeah. Let me I'll see. Pull that up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like it. They make they make really good. Um, they have a lot. Of, they have a wide range of things now. I mean, they, have, they, make, they make everything. That's right. Yeah. I didn't know they had that. Yeah, Remember yeah, that? it is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the Stratotech T-shirt, I like too. Mm -hmm. So it's yep. the same thing. Okay. Yeah, it's good I stuff. think that's like. Is that a newer line? Because I know the last time we did ads for them, that they they wanted to talk about the Stratotech tees. Mm. And I don't remember rolling out the winter stuff. Huh? They've yeah. had the tees for a long time, but the hoodies new. Yeah, I don't. Well, I started wearing I a sweater in here because uh, you got the freaking. Uh, I'm totally gonna get one. Of those. I know it's uh, polar bears. Not the climate polar bear controlled bro. now. Yeah. We got the thermostat thermostat Nazi Adam in here. <laughs> if you touch that. Tell our audience what hey, happened. Literally, Tell you get up in happened. the middle of the show, dude, you'll change that so shit. So Sal eighty percent less back sweat, dude. Uh, <laughs> it's, I know. I'm not Justin and I are totally fine. So it's you fine. guys always strong arm your own what you want with the Sal being the center of attention is now backfired on himself because <laughs> he's he's, <laughs> he's got the best lighting, the front of the camera, That's right. he looks the best. But guess what? The vent doesn't have is to turn. right above his head. Just so he cold, can, you chill. can read everything easy. I'm like, yeah, my neck. I got just over here in the dark and the shadows. You know what I'm saying? But I, think, I can't tell that's Adam or Justin. I think yeah. that's one of them. So, it's, real, it's real hard here. It's just corner, blowing right you know? on my head, man. It's, it's cold it's as blasting, shit, you know? It's blasting you oh, and Doug dude. right now. I'm so. going to yeah, get sick. Like, hey, get I, sick from I, I've been waiting for us to fire the, the mics up because I want to share this with you guys. And uh, I wanted to wait to talk about it. On. Doug, can you pull up? on? The, did you get tickets already? I haven't yet. Okay, I so see, I just uh, bought tickets to this Saturday. What, what? Yeah, come on, dude. You, you were talking so about was, earlier. I was going to meet up with my buddy. So Saturday, Katrina and I are going to probably like that's going to be like our birthday thing, right? We're gonna we're gonna do. Oh yeah, your birthday. Nice. Yeah, yeah both both of us have our birthday. Forty three or forty four? I don't know actually. You have to do the math. Okay. Check this out. Sumo and sushi in San Francisco. No. Bro, I got front row sumo seats. No, no, sushi? I want to watch sumo. Bro, and Sick. have sushi ser served to you. Wow. Off sumo wrestling. That's cool. <laughs> These are all like like <laughs> champion dudes too that have been pros for like ten years. Like, oh, it's like le a legit. You know that's a bucket list thing for me, right? Uh, dude, me too. This was like I've always wanted to watch a sumo. Look match. at this. So it's got like an open bar set up. They have the tables around. The Wait, you didn't get us tickets? No. I would pay you back. Oh, I, I didn't know if everyone. That's why I'm bringing it up right now, so you guys could get in on this if you guys want to go. Send that to Jessica, Doug, because we're gonna. I'm gonna go with that. His, is this cool or what? Hell this yeah! Super cool. Look, look how you get to sit right here in the front Bro, and watch. People are look at that. So people Whoa. have no idea about the athleticism and the skill of oh, sumo wrestlers. It's it's like pure power. It's a martial art. Yeah. It, I mean, they have technique. You, Isn't that uh, awesome? Yeah. No, they're strong. What as a fuck. brilliant idea. Oh, to do man. that. I'm so mad. I'm, I can't believe we didn't know about this. I just the only way this came about. I was literally going to go meet up with my buddy. We're going to do. We were going like, to drive to the coast or something together. Have lunch with our wives. And he's like, "Oh, I think my wife already booked some, some this thing." And he sends me this link, and I'm like, "Oh my god, dude! I got to tell my buddies. They're gonna yeah. they're gonna love this." Now, okay. Wow, is Konishki still alive? Is he? Yeah, he's there? still alive. He's actually hosting this. Do you know how big he is? No. Do you know how big that guy is? Like size wise, yeah. bro. He's, is that him right there? He's that's him right there. Yeah, he's giant. Wow. Oh, I, I mean, he, he. I mean, he's a giant. It shows the lineup of guys okay. that are going to be there too. They're all like, like I said, eight, ten year pros. Like it's like a legit thing. Wow. You yeah. tell me I'm not alone, but like they have to be like massive in order to like pull off the little thing they have to wear. Have you ever seen one of the sumo guys that's not quite that big? Oh, and they and wear it just that. looks like a thong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it looks all awkward yeah. and yeah. Because there's international sumo fighters that are that they'll they'll be leaner. They're just kind of like thick. Some are leaner than others yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, you I got, mean they had something big, at the, big boy. At the convention, but I mean I want to see like a legit this is like legit. Now, was so. Konishki was he Hawaiian or Japanese? He's Hawaiian. Yeah, because that was kind of a big deal. Hmm. He was one of the First or he was few. yeah he reached the highest level uh, I think Ozeki's the highest maybe there's one above that now you you took a picture with him I have a picture you stood of him. next to him yeah oh, you do I do how big I, you I, have to go he's, he's absolutely massive I felt like just like a little tiny thing next to him do you know when they wow. turn is it forty or fifty that they make a big deal. I don't know. Look because, it up. Because they mostly don't live that long. Because that they long? have short lifespans. Yeah, but yeah. when I took a picture with him, he was in his prime. Yeah. Uh, and interestingly, if you've seen the Aerosmith album, Big Big Ones, I think yeah, it's big called. Ones. He's on the back cover. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. What? Uh, so, what's the typical like for the big 
heavyweights, like what their calorie amount is, like that they consume. Well, that's a good day, question. I would wonder. There's a specific. I brought yeah, this up. Chunko Nabe is, I think, it was. Yeah, called, Chunko yeah. Nabe is a is a is a. Is it the spam rice thing dish. or whatever? No, it's like a hot pot. It's got lots of uh, vegetables and meat and rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't eat a bunch of garbage traditionally. It's just a lot of food. It's just a lot of calories, and they and cram. drink uh, sake. Probably right? sake and beer. Sake I would and say. beer. But the culture for people who are like, this is this sounds silly. No, look into the culture of sumo. When you go to traditionally a traditional sumo school in Japan and you want to learn, it's like you're an apprentice and then you move up the scale and you have to like clean their 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 the thing that they wear. You got to basically do whatever they tell you, and then you move up in the ranks and it's very honor based. Yeah, you're the, the whipping boy. Yeah, for I'm a so while. pumped that Katrina was like totally about it. That's She's cool. like, oh my god, I'm totally down. Like, <laughs> There's yes. this one little sumo guy because everybody oh. thinks it's just like the biggest guy. There's this one dude I can't remember his name, Japanese dude, and he was smaller compared to the rest of them. Yeah, and he was so good at uh and moving out of the way or or using his body weight to throw the other guy, and then they slap each other. Have you guys ever seen that? Yeah. Remember uh, Street Fighter? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would, bro. If you E Honda, they would blast somebody with those with those hands. So yeah. is that okay? You just brought up the pot right there. I'm assuming those are like really high fat. Is those have fat, fat meats? Is like a pork or something? What is yeah, it? Yeah, I suppose they have pork in it. I'm not sure exactly the uh, ingredients. Because that doesn't but... look like it would be super high calorie. It yeah. doesn't. It looks very healthy actually. Yeah. yeah um, I yeah. However, I do think there's a lot of rice that they eat. Uh, so that I think that rice combined with the fats. Yeah, it's got to be then higher fats some, because some beer. I, there's a genetic component too. Sure, yeah, like sure. some of these people are of course, just, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Like they're just they're hmm. just big dudes, but they're not they're not not athletic. That's the thing. Like, uh, oh, they, they're super they, athletic. They do the yeah. splits. Yeah, yeah. Their workouts are intense. It's for, yeah, it's very explosive, like sprint style training. So this is cool for our audience because even if you're not you don't live here, it's it's a tour. So it just happens to be in San Francisco this weekend. But they're touring all over the country, and they're they're hosting what, these events. What good timing, right? Did you guys see San Francisco oh. miraculously is cleaned up? Did you see this? The Perfect what? transition. Did yeah. you see that? No. Oh, you see Gavin Newsom entertaining Xi Jinping and, and cleaning the whole streets no, just miraculously. If I, if I was a longtime San Francisco resident, I'd be so mad right now. Dude. So everybody knows San Francisco's what got this. A farce. Open-air drug markets. Homeless and can like terrible drug yeah. use, like businesses are leaving. <laughs> just side shuffle them real quick. Looks like a hellscape in some of these places. It's crazy. All of a sudden, within two weeks, spotless and clean. Mm -hmm. The streets are clean. Nothing. You know why? Because the Chinese, uh, was it Xi Jinping is coming to visit? Yeah, president. With, and visit with Gavin Newsom. Yeah. So they clean the streets up for two weeks. Yeah. What do they do with the people? I think uh, they, 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 they put they them in specific them, areas of yeah, the city. Zoned areas. Yeah. Yeah. What? I know. It's dude. just what a farce. It's dude. such Serious? bullshit. After dude. everybody, oh, we can't clean up. We can't do anything about it. You know, boom, two weeks. R yeah. And then they did an interview with just Gavin show, Newsom. Yeah. And he literally is like, okay, so everybody's saying we only cleaned up the streets and we did it quickly because of the you know the Chinese politicians who are visiting. And he goes, and that's true. That is why we did that. And he goes, but and he went into some other bullshit. Yeah. Shut up. But I yeah, know. if that guy I runs, have reasons and eh. if that guy, I'm telling you, from, as a, from a California, if that guy runs for president, please Literally just look into what he's done. Nothing positive, net zero oh, positive. Yeah. Look at what he's yeah. done here. But yeah, everybody's. So I got family over there, and they're like, "Bro, it's so clean now." <laughs> 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 yeah, now's the time to visit. I guess I missed my window for that. I went up and saw a concert when it was the apocalypse. So. Oh. Yeah, I didn't see waited. the actual address of where I'm at uh, as far as the uh, the thing, the event. I mean, like I said, I knew I wanted to go no matter what, but hopefully it's not one of the, the worst. No, parts. it's down by the, I forget the name of that area. It's the Art art Dome down there. I forget the name of the, uh, anyway. So you know up. what I do now when I go down there uh, is you I do look private at, parking. Yeah. I Palace find of Fine Arts. It's where? It's at the Palace of Fine Arts. Okay. So it's I think near it's near Embarcadero probably, or no? Is that where that's at? Uh, no, I think it's- I thought it was near the water. Yeah, I don't know the area that well. well. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's the move is to find- And it's not like that crazy more- It's not like it's crazy expensive. You still get a, a good deal. And, you pay and what's the site? There's a pay, there's an app, right? Yeah, there's an app. I don't know the app off the top of my head. I mean, you could literally Google like find looking for private parking in, in San Francisco or any big city for that matter. It's a big thing. People do it all the time now, especially in cities where parking is really expensive. There's people that have these uh, houses or garages that have, you know, four, six, eight parking spots. They uh they they rent them out and then they always they have a guy that attends to the vehicles the whole time mm. and there's security cameras and it's just like it's not on the street so you don't have to worry about that's you know. the way to do it yeah we just Katrina dude her car got keyed uh this weekend what so pissed dude where so pissed. I mean we think it was at um 
her cheat yeah deep too like a deep key what yeah. why do people do On that the door uh, dude so i asked her i was like honey it just doesn't make sense why would someone do this i said did you did you park somewhere she goes honestly the only thing i did hon was when i parked at her brother larry's house um she was in the driveway and her rear end was uh halfway in the sidewalk and that's perfect. That's exactly what happened. Somebody walked by, had was jingling their keys or had their keys on them, and her her rear end was in the on the sidewalk a little Some bit. Some social justice and warrior. And so somebody just and I mean wow. they boy they dug in. They dug. It's like it's a deep all the way across her her back. Why does that infuriate me so? Oh, much? it makes I me know, so mad. So and I, I actually was right before we started right now, I was texting her because this just happened. I, I text her. I was like, hey, your her brother has cameras like we have in front of the house. So I'm like, it, if it happened there, we should have it on film what this person looks like. I'm definitely going to go knocking on some doors if that's the <laughs> wow. case, dude. That's just, uh, just so... It's such a cowardly... Like, yeah. what a it's like what we talked about the other day. Cowardly. About, uh, stealing, and I guess we should have wrapped that in there because I would put that right there too. Like just destroying someone's property like that is like... I don't know. I don't know if it's because I'm like a car dude. And so yeah. I, I'm like, there's no it? honor in that. There's no justification for that. Like no. there's nothing of value that you're my wife's car too. Like, and yeah. like, you're that's making like, a good for point. that reason, you know what yeah. I'm talking about, right? Like if you're in yeah. the driveway yeah, yeah. and it's like the where it's like, that's kinda, Italian parking, right? People do that all the time. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I mean, go to any of my family parties and there'll be cars in the driveway, halfway off the driveway on the lawn. Like, <laughs> they just park wherever the <laughs> yeah, hell you want. Dude. Just got to fit it in there somehow. Wow. And I, and I remember being a, a, a punk little young kid when when someone would park close to us, but I didn't do something that would destroy their car. I did things like, you know, spit a loogie on their door handle or something like that wow. for doing some some shitty ass, like, you know, pin you in or something like that. Nothing that would that you couldn't wash off. Nothing that wouldn't be like, oh, that's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Like, But to key someone's car and, and, and destroy like that, like that's going to be expensive to get that fixed. Oh. Uh. Yeah, that's a, that's oh, a nice. super super yeah. pissed. About um, so I'm going to go uh, into a little bit of a health um, segment here. So there's these articles that are circulating on social media about how young girls are starting their periods earlier than ever, and there's all these different speculations as to what might be going on. Mm. Um, but the most obvious one isn't really being um, addressed. Which I don't know if you guys knew this, but did you guys know that girls used to the average woman in the 1800s, I want to say, started her period right around 17 or 18. Do you guys know that? Wow, mm -mm. that late? Yeah. That. Now it's like fourth and fifth grade. Yeah, sometimes. now it's like, it's, it, it, it could start as young as 10, Crazy. 9, 10. Yeah, we, I, my, my, my niece was fourth grade and i i knew a girl that was like third grade yeah, yeah. yeah that's so, crazy yeah though, and dude. so there's like oh you know see it needs you know estrogens this that and the other but it's probably because they're they were malnourished for so long and now they're overnourished so obesity calories mm, lots yeah. of tells the body okay you're ready to procreate so especially if a girl is eating a lot or eating much more than she needs um then they'll get their periods a little early so mm. but yeah it's interesting right I mean, we've been noticing that for a while, don't you? I remember yeah, people well, talking about the the girls were maturing earlier and earlier and earlier. I mean, isn't that the case with boys too? I mean, I've seen this uh, in regard to like my oldest friends, like some of them that were like bigger guys or like have been, you know, a little bit more on the obese kind of side, like have mustache and are very much more. That's a, a good deeper question. Voice. I, it makes sense. It would be mm. the similar signal, right? I yeah. mean, obviously for, for, for girls, it's a stronger signal because they have to support. Well, isn't the sure. other theory, like just the amount of like hormones and stuff that we yeah. pump into animals yeah. and it's like, you but know, it's, it's probably more to do with calories than it, than it is. But I mean, that's got to play a role too. I'm mm -hmm. sure. That. It's probably more to do with calories. I mean, you eat the meat from this cattle. They're pumping them full yeah, of yeah. Hormone, hor hormones. Even if it's not hor harmful, you would think that if you over years and pounds and pounds and pounds of meat that you eat, you would think that. You I don't know if that would induce a uh, period or if it would just affect the hormones negatively or, or, or just, you know, maybe affect them. I guess that could have an effect if, if you think about it. But I do know for, I mean, even Doug, you can even look this up like, uh, average period in the 1800s you know it's uh, funny there's definitely average, somebody there's know. definitely somebody who's scoffing at that right now and it's just like oh my god there's studies around this that prove that it's like you have like six week 12 week studies on yeah. stuff like this that's a perfect example of why the study stuff sometimes is such bullshit it's like yeah no okay if you took a if you ate an animal that was getting pumped full of hormones and you measured what it did to your hormones over six to 12 weeks, mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm sure it's Okay, benign. so I was off. I was off, but still a lot. So the average age uh, in 1840 was 16 and a half years. Okay, so almost 17. And now it's 13. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, but now it seems to be 
um, getting younger again. Interesting. That yeah. is interesting. Yeah. It's got to be a multitude of factors. So the length of time during which women are exposed to endogenous estrogen has therefore been increasing. And this is the National Institute of Health. Okay. So they are saying that, uh, that xenoestrogens are probably playing a larger role. But at first it was had to be calories. They're admitting that, huh? Because that used to be like on the woo-woo side. Yeah. You know, that's something that's now being widely accepted. Uh-huh. Oh, endogenous. On, endogenous, within endogenous body, yeah. Within the body. It's got, it's, it's, look, if if a girl doesn't have enough calories or enough fat on her body, her body, look, by the way, this will happen to any, to a woman at any age. You're 25, your period will stop if so you're that, not eating you're, enough. You're right, years. actually. That makes way more mm -hmm. sense, Sal. And that's the more obvious. Right. That's going to be the bigger It's just impact. simply there. Like, especially when you consider yeah, like in it's the last, signal. even in our, in, in the last few decades, like it was uh, still normalized to be really skinny. And yeah. now it's, more accepted to be fuller, thicker, yeah. and there's an abundance of food. Well, look and up childhood, look up childhood so. obesity um, over the last three that, decades. Oh, yeah. that, that makes way more sense. Way yeah, that childhood sense. obesity has exploded yeah. uh, over the last few decades oh, yeah. to the point where it was non-existent. When, um, so I've said this many times on the podcast. When we were kids, type 2 diabetes was called adult-onset diabetes mm -hmm. because only adults got it. And then they changed the name because then kids started getting it um, at higher and higher rates. But childhood obesity was almost 0% for a long time. So yeah. let's see. Wow. In the last 30 years, childhood obesity has more than doubled in wow. children and tripled in adolescence. Wow. Holy cow. Yeah. Look at this. Thanks, uh, Doritos. The, prevalent, the, the prevalence of obesity among U.S. children and adolescents was at 18.5% in 2015, 2016. Holy cow. That's almost two out of 10 kids is going to be obese, not overweight, yeah, obese. obese. Yeah. Whole, so overweight has got to be like 30%. Holy cow. Yeah. That's great. And you know what's crazy about this? This is based off weight. I bet they're under muscled also. Oh, so it's yeah. probably even worse than the, than less the scale is showing. physical demand, less opportunity for physical education, extracurricular activities. And then, yeah, then look at what... They're uh, feeding them at the cafeterias. It's like promoted by, uh, you know, the government. It's like, oh man, it's 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 alarming. Oh dude, it's you like ever, what what kind of food is it? You ever it's seen the vending like, machines at these? By craft, dude. Like, I, really? I, I were doing tours of high schools and uh, for my daughter, and all schools have vending machines. Yeah. You ask me how many healthy things are in these machines. Yeah. There's like this, there's no protein options. No, like, none. It's all carbohydrates. It's all candy. It's like, Chips, yeah, uh, cheese is as much as much proteins you're gonna get. Yeah, and then on I mean, top the of difficult it, situation right there is like if you had a healthy option, do the kids even choose it? I know. Well, well they will if that's the if only it's option. Good, yeah. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. So if you if you do, yeah, that. don't give them an option between Doritos and right, you know, right. And then you, then you have to ask like, how much less money does the school make or whoever's, that's it right there. Yeah, yeah. like how much money. less money do they make if they give them a healthy option that's only? It right and, there. Yeah, for sure, yeah. right? I mean, they, they, you know it's motivated by yeah. that. And then not only that, you know what else I saw in the school uh, vending machines? Mm. Energy drinks. Oh, my God. It's yeah. such a problem now. Yeah, energy drinks. Huge problem. 150 milligrams, 200 milligrams caffeine. Yeah. And these are like, you know, Dude, these are 14-year-olds. Getting after it early. I know. Which is like setting them up. It's so crazy interesting. Is there, any, is there any places that are trying to put an age limit on caffeine? Yeah. yeah. I'm so surprised we have it. It's a drug. Yeah. And it is a drug that is deadly. Yes, it's de exactly that. If we were to have found it like today, we didn't mm -hmm. know what it was. We just found oh, it. It would be schedule two or something. Oh, like that. yeah. Oh. There's no, and even if it was legal, we would have an age limit on it 100%. For sure. Because I, so it's so crazy to me that we, that's not really talked about. No. Like, Super crazy. And it's in the it's in the in the vending machines. <laughs> it's just crazy. I was I was looking at them like, holy shit! I could buy a, an energy drink here. Well, yeah. I I th I really think that it's it's just now getting on people's radar because of Prime because mm. Prime blew up so big and in among the, kids in, in, among Dude. kids. Yeah, and it's what two hundred milligram caffeine drink, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. That's a huge the problem. Is, There's another sneaky one because of the legalization of uh, marijuana in a lot of places too. Like the edibles are going around like crazy with kids gummies. Uh. And they're, all, they're eating them in class. They're vaping. like, And this is not something. It was like you knew kind of who was the, the ones that would sneak off, you know, on oh, Mondays yeah. and go up in the woods and, and smoke. It's like now it's so elusive because it's these gummies and it's getting passed around. And Is that happening? Yes, dude. It's cra I was wow. like, oh, my God, of course. I wonder how many high school teachers are dealing with that. Like, And you know, right? Like you can tell when a kid's like blitzed and like they just had like a gummy. Like sure. and you didn't see them smoke. They don't smell like weed. Like how do you, what do you do? 
Yeah. Like, and how do you, as a, as a teacher, how do you make that call unless you're a hundred percent sure with allergies and other things that yeah, cause you can't your test them, right? There's yeah. No, like, weed test. So how do you do that as a teacher? Oh. You got kids in your class, know. you know, damn well that they're, they're messing around they're doing shit like that, but then you can't really single them out and call them out if you didn't catch them doing something like that. So we're like, is there, yeah. a, is well, there some a, of the parents are so like, just like well, free about it. And like, it's like, it's, it's not that big a deal. And I'm like, it's not that big a deal. Really? Yeah. Like wow. I, I've had to remove <laughs> myself from some of these parents. Oh my God, my parents. Really? I'm like, I will slap you. You know what? Can, uh, my parents would come on glue. Yeah. THC has very negative effects on the developing brain. Yeah. That's what they show. Yeah. If, if a child, uh, because of the way it affects the developing brain, they're much more likely. Short term memory, all kinds of well, issues. Well, not just that. They develop uh, higher rates of uh, psychosis, mm -hmm. anxiety, um, disorders that, that are hard to get rid of once. You develop them because the brain's plastic. Yeah. Their brain is still shaping. And so you're you're sending it the strong signal that's telling it to shape in a different way. Once it's done shaping, that's it. You know, once you've got that plasticity is gone, it's gone. Yeah. So that's I remember we had that, new problems. that controversial debate uh, you and I had about what we would let our kids do. More. Yeah, more. And I was I was the one who was uh, ironically more anti-weed. Yeah. And and part of that, the why I am is because because it's become so so normalized yeah. mm -hmm. and it doesn't have these crazy adverse effects and yeah. it doesn't seem to be as dangerous. And so then the justification for kids to abuse it is going to be much higher because of that. And, you know, I, I have seen firsthand in myself and in my, in my siblings and friends, like it, it's one of those things that I don't care what you say. I mean, you're, you're not productive just, on but that But just shit. think just, about the mixed messages that we're sending kids, right? We're mm -hmm. like, don't do that. Take your meth from the prescription, <laughs> yeah, you know, right, from the yeah. prescription bottle. Yeah, there's a whole nother don't, problem there. Yeah, don't take that. Take your antipsychotic, you know, whatever medication that you're supposed to take every day because it keeps you from now we've, feeling sad. Or we've whatever. been talking about this, and this is for a while, and I know there's been documentaries now have came out on this. Is the uh, the prescribing of these med ADD and stuff like that, like uh, medications, are they... Are they going down? Are they know. leveling that's out? A good, that's are a good they because they were like on this crazy trajectory yes. Yes. the last ten years? And I know they've done some crazy documentaries on how many kids are being medicated by it. But I also feel like there's now enough people kind of talking about this, and, I, and more people. I think a lot of people were oblivious. I think a lot yeah. of people had kids that were restless, and doctor said do this, and so oh, it came from my yeah. doctor. I wasn't really. I think I think when more and more people understood that it's like literally meth. That you're giving yeah. your kids, I think that really. I think made, there's more awareness from the parents' perspective now. Yeah, I think now, more people started to go like, "Oh, may impact that," but I, I feel like it's still prescribed. Like, oh, it was. definitely is still. I'm curious to yeah. like if it's still. Doug, can you, are you looking that up, Doug? To look at the. Prevalence? I am looking it up. Yeah. Any anything any any hits there? I, yeah, I'm not seeing anything specifically yet, but this is interesting. The U.S. has been struck struck in a shortage yeah. for Adderall. Yeah. Wow. Uh, since this is September article which is interesting yeah yeah i did i didn't know about that <laughs> what's the what's the black market on that look like I have no what's idea. A, what's an adderall pill go for andrew everybody's way too <laughs> confident and opinionated now andrew has no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah andrew <laughs> he like rattles it off all right 25 if you get like a four yeah, milligram yeah. No. <laughs> you get a fit i've never it. tried adderall You've never tried it? No. Never? I, I didn't Same. until I didn't until my late twenties. It's uh Yeah, late twenties. Yeah, it was at least late twenties, maybe even after that. I I never had one either. I didn't even know what I so I, that's why I think that's part of why I think some of these parents are like, I didn't realize what it was. Mm -hmm. I just I'm like, oh, I didn't think I had ADD. I don't think I ever needed it. And so Don't you think that should almost be one of those things to consider as a parent if you're gonna put your kid on it to try it and at least see how it makes you feel? Oh, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's. I wonder. A, yeah, that's that a staple. Be like a standard. Before right? I give my kids something, let me yeah. try. It. What does that say there, Doug? So the prevalence of use of Adderall for grades eight, ten, and twelve from two thousand nine to twenty twenty two. So, oh, so look, it has gone down. It's gone down in some areas. For example, twelfth graders, it's gone down quite substantially. Uh, for the eighth graders, I believe it's gone up. It's, it's fluctuated quite a bit but uh yeah overall though it looks like it's been going down good i think more i think it's like the backswing right? i mean look yeah. how 2015 it was like at its peak yeah Pretty yes much. around 2015 or 2012 right in that area interesting though back then 2015 looks like it was at its peak for the older kids but not so much on the and the the younger kids has actually climbed since 2015 hmm. wow 
Yeah. You know, that's, when you look at the- That's kind of crazy. So the, I wonder if that's actually uh, more awareness to these old, the kids choosing not to. These teenagers and, and stuff like that in maybe. high school, learning more about it and going like, hey, I don't think I want to take this stuff. We got to look at the full picture and mm -hmm. see what else is being prescribed or what else is being done because who knows? Look, this is coming uh, from someone who's like, I, I, have, I am officially diagnosed okay, ADHD as an adult and I have the prescription of Adderall, which I don't use because it, I just, it didn't. I, I could tell I was developing bad relationships for me. There are, and you can look this up, look at the data on things you can do to help and uh, like things like exercise, diet, different learning strategies or teaching strategies have profound impacts mm -hmm. on a lot of kids. I'm not saying it's for everybody. I'm sure there's some kids out there where it's really, really tough, um, but uh, it, there, there's lots of things you could do that will have a positive impact. And unfortunately, um, you know, teachers can't necessarily change their model to help some of these kids. So it's like you got to fit the kid into the, you know, it's like fitting this, the square peg into the round hole rather than changing the hole, mm -hmm. you know, type of deal. So yeah, yeah. anyway, uh, we should talk about how uh, Black Friday is starting now. Yeah, it's is starting that it? now. It's, it's starting now. right now. Oh. Now here's what the, this is Always what they did. Always the, the best time of the year. This is what they yep. did. 60% off everything. Everything. Bund bundles? Bundles too. Oh, wow. Wow. 60% off. Not even our latest programs? Every program Dang. and every bundle, 60% off done. And it's we started a little early this year, right? Is that is that is that? Yeah. Okay. This is before Thanksgiving or Black Friday. Yeah. So. so there you go. So Look if out. you want a program or programs or bundles, and there's no limit to what you can use this for, you it's all 60% off. You go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and the code is literally Black Friday. And that'll give you the 60% off. Gangbusters. All right. So today's shout out is actually the event that we're putting together is for you, trainers and coaches. You shouting yourself out? Yeah. Am I on it? <laughs> shout <laughs> out it. Shout it out loud. So we're Sounds doing, like I just uh, I want to shout myself out. Yeah. Actually. Real quick. <laughs> give me a follow. So uh, it's a three part trainer training. So there's three of them and I'm going to be teaching and coaching trainers. It's totally free. And then Adam and Justin are going to be there. It's going to be live. So you can ask questions or whatever. They'll be answering questions. And our our goal is really to um, to make trainers and coaches better, or be cut, provide them with resources to help them be better. Did so it's starting January fifteenth, but you have to go sign up first at mindpumptrainer.com. The exciting part about this, yeah. uh, I'm and I kind of alluded to it a little bit on the forum and some of the talks that I've done is that uh, this is going to be a, a, a I think a real shift of focus for the business that we haven't really put a lot of energy and effort into that. I think all of us are really excited about. It. I mean, Super. Mm -hmm. yeah, our, as much as we love helping the general pop, our passion and what we did for most of our careers were actually training other trainers and coaches. And so, you know, for the first time, we're really starting to put a lot of energy and focus into that direction. So, I'm pretty excited to see what what comes of it. All right, everybody, check this out. Organifi is having a huge sale right now. Check this out. You spend $100, you get 20% off and free shipping. Spend $150, get 20% off free shipping and a capsule of your choice. That means free supplements. Everybody loves free supplements. Anyway, check this out. This sale is ending on the 27th, all right? So go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump, get another discount. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Robert from Connecticut. What's up, Robert? How can we help you? Guys, hey, what up? I'm uh, super excited to be on, a little bit nervous. Um, I'm a reasonably new listener, just started with you guys back in January, but I've gone back and, gosh, listened to hundreds of episodes. So just want to say thanks for the awesome content. Uh, it's been amazing. I got some family members turned on to you guys, and it's just been really great. So thank you. I had uh, a couple of initial questions for you. One of them, I'm going to change a little bit if that's okay. Sure. Because my circumstances have changed. The, the first question I had was about going into a bulk and how much bumping up my I should do with calories. But what's changed for me is back in September, I bought the RGB bundle and I started anabolic. Um, about a month later, I had I bumped my calories up about five or six hundred per day, and I ran that for about a month. Um, and my gains, my strength gains, were just incredible. Uh, I packed on some good weight, some muscle, some fat as well. I think I probably went from about sixteen to maybe nineteen or twenty percent body fat, which was okay. Um, 
So here's my question. My circumstances have changed. Um, I'm a, a recovering alcoholic. I'm in recovery and I've come into a treatment center. And in that treatment center, I have limited time to be able to, to work out. I also don't have a whole lot of control over my diet. So I think protein staying over 100 grams per day is going to be a little difficult for me. I'm 100 and about 170 pounds at the moment. Um, and I'm going to have limited access uh, as far as time goes and equipment goes. Uh, so I was thinking of either making an attempt at, um, at MAPS 15. There is some equipment here. Um, or potentially doing uh, anywhere. What would you guys recommend? I'm going to be here for about 90 days. First of all, want to congratulate you on the decision to do what you're doing right now. And so we were just talked about this the other day about the entire sphere of health, right? Is yeah. so much more than just macros and lifting weights and what you're doing right now and, and getting through that is by far the most important thing. And so if you're a client of mine, like I'm going to, I'm going to put together a routine, like say like maps 15 or, and, and honestly, it's literally, I, I'm not really worried about if you're hitting your macros right now, because it's more about the consistency and, and what that's going to give you at like of, of, okay, every day I get to do my little routine yep. that helps me break peace of mind. I've got, like, I'm not tripping about, did we hit our pro grams of protein? Do, are we building muscle right now or not? It's like what you're doing to improve your overall health right now is massive. And it's you're moving in the right direction, no matter what yeah. you do inside the gym or not. So I just want to make that clear. Yeah, I would use uh, thank you. I would use the strength training as a um, a discipline tool, as one to bring you structure and start your day off, versus uh, a, a tool to build muscle or burn body fat. Now the odds are you probably will do both, because yeah. you know because it's a, it's a workout um, and it is effective, but I would treat it. Um, like I said, treat it like a, a discipline, um, practice. Uh, and so 15 minutes every single day, 15 to 20 minutes every single day is a great way I love that. to start your day. The, I do have a question though, on the 16 to 19% body fat or 20%. Did you test your body fat through that period? Now, or is that a guess? Okay. Those are just my estimates based on a, you know, based on a scale that gives okay. me that information, which very, I know is not ve super accurate. Very, very, very unlikely you went up three or 4% body fat with a 500 calorie bump. So very, okay. very unlikely. Yeah. And your strength went up a it, lot. You might be mistaken. It could have been more, but I went up 20 pounds. I went up like 18 pounds in four weeks. Right. And you, in this, in four weeks? Yeah. From 500 calories of an increase? I, it could, it could have been more, I'm guessing somewhere between five and 600. Unlikely. So, it, so okay. next time you do something like that, really track. Yeah. Um, unless you were so depleted before there was a lot of water and mm -hmm. hydration, but even then yeah, you did say your strength went up. What, what did that look like? 15 to 20%. Oh, wow. And I mean, I, I, I gained more strength in my lifts, um, you know, running around up 15 to 20% in weight at an eight to 10, uh, rep count range. You know what? The, the numbers that I gave you guys are wrong. I'm up 20 pounds. Now that first month, I probably went up 10 pounds. Okay. And I, I could have been as high as 700, 700 a day versus yeah. five. Okay. I just wanted some clarity. So if you I, do was, that, I was drinking my ass off, so I wasn't paying attention oh. to the calories as much as I think I was. Okay. Robert, I appreciate yeah. you saying that. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Look, when you get out of this, um, and, and God bless you for success. When you come out of this, and you attempt this again, um, yeah. I want you to track it. I want you to count and track it, do it without alcohol, whatever you experienced yeah. before, <clears throat> it's going to blow, it's going to blow the doors off of what you did before, uh, the second time okay. around. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think the, the maps 15 and really focusing on that right now, That's it. I, I don't even want you stressing about no. food right now. No, Eat nothing. when you're hungry, you know, make the best choices you can in the situation you are. If you can have Get, a protein shake, if you want that as a snack in between, that'd yeah. be great. I don't know if they allow you to bring that in, but yeah. that would be the only thing. But just, just stick to the maps 15. And then when you get out, I actually want, I want you to get in the, the private forum with us. Cause then, okay. cause then I would like to, then I would like to keep an eye on you on what you're doing nutritionally and working out and use that community as a support group through this process, because what you're doing and what you're focusing on is far more important than 
body fat percentage, and, and it, but it doesn't mean that we can't accomplish both. I, I want to make that clear. So it's right. not, doesn't mean that you can't get more fit and ripped and build some muscle and do all those things. It's just that you're, you're tackling a monster already as is. And I want to make sure that we're, we're, we're focused on the wins of you being consistent with that first. And then all this other stuff that we're doing is just a bonus to, <clears throat> to that because you're moving in, in the right direction for overall health already. Yeah. So. Another practice you might want to try with food uh is fasting not for fat loss okay. not for muscle gain nothing else but you're practicing a form of detachment and it, it, it it's a it's a nice practice to help you do with what you're doing now so like a day yeah. or two fast uh might bring you some clarity um and and help you with the entire process um so okay. right now it's all about improving your health and that's it gotcha I really appreciate that advice. You know, <clears throat> it's so easy having, you know, reasonably addictive behavior for the exercise to become more about results than it is about just staying healthy. Yep. Um, and so I really like your advice about staying focused on, on that and not necessarily what's going on with my body composition, yeah. but just keeping that discipline of trying to eat healthy and getting some movement every day. Robert, do you so have thank a, you. Do thank you, a, you for that. Do you have a spiritual or religious practice? I do, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. I'm gonna have Doug. I, I, I practice Buddhism. Okay, okay. Buddhism has got. Yeah. The, okay, so all the major religions talk about detachment in some way, shape, yeah. or form. I'm gonna have Doug send you a video that I watched actually this morning. It's really serendipitous. It is from the Catholic faith, uh, so it is a different yeah. religion, but the spiritual truth in it you'll see resonates with Buddhism as well. Um, and it, again, it's taught across every major world religion that I'm aware of. And I think it'll help uh, with some of what you're dealing with. So I'll have Doug, Doug send you that link. And I literally oh, watched it this great. morning. I literally watched this morning on the way here. Awesome. I can't wait to see that. Okay. Can, uh, can I ask one more quick question of, of you course, guys? Of course. Of course. Um, is, uh, I, my second question in my original email had to do with what are your guys' thoughts, experience, um, opinion on uh, – the uh, amino acids in like a pill form. So while I'm here, getting enough, getting 150 grams of protein a day is going to be very difficult. Um, is supplementing with that something you think would be helpful? In your in your opinion, is it effective? Helpful. You know, they have all these stories about it being super pure and blah blah blah. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, helpful for what you're doing? No. Okay. It's, yeah, not really. I mean, if you want supplements that will help you with what your current goal is. Yeah. Um, I would look into things like Sam E might be beneficial. Creatine okay. might be beneficial. Yeah. Both of those Creatine have positive. Yes. They both have positive effects on liver <clears throat> health and positive mental health effects. I would add the protein shake too. A I mean, shake would be better than branched yeah. human. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you, you want your protein, if you have access to that. Yeah. I, I haven't talked to the doctors and nurses and the med people here yet. I don't think they're going to let me fool with creatine uh, or protein shakes or any of that supplemental stuff, but they might let me take uh, something in a pill form. Well, creatine um, can come in pill form. So, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So I'll yeah. go creatine monohydrate. So there's another tap. There's another one called Sam E. They're both okay. excellent for liver and mental health. And that's it. Now awesome. they, they have side effects. The, the other effects are muscle building, all that stuff. I, I I do want to make it clear though. You, you get through this process yeah. and you come out the other end of this and I don't give a shit if you ever hit your protein intake or your yeah. supplements, but you get through this process and come out, you're going to feel amazing just getting through it. And if you actually even created a discipline around working out every day for 15 to 20 minutes we are fucking massively winning yeah massively winning yeah. That's right. like and now you are perfectly set up for okay i'm back into the real world now let's start to introduce some of these supplements let's start to get on my protein intake let's start and, and then you got a great foundation to build on that like that is that is the main thing I, if you're a client of mine and we're or we've been friends for a long time you're going in on this that's what i'm telling you this is our goal come out the other end of this that you've been consistent with your 15 to 20 minute workouts and you came out 100 percent sober and feeling good now let's go fucking tackle this body composition yep. thing you want to do awesome advice all right wow guys really appreciate it Ro oh real quick do you have maps 15 because yeah. we'll send it to you robert i just want to make sure you got that uh maps what 15 15 no, I have the RGB bundle uh, just that. We'll uh, send it to don't you. have Maps 15. We're going to send Maps 15 Let's and send you access to the private forum so you yeah. have access to us. Yeah, there. we'll send that over to you. Oh, that would be amazing. You, you got, got it, you. Man. We got you, Robert. Good luck. 
Thank you, guys. Please, hey, uh, I'll let you know how I make out. Yes, please. Yeah. When you get out, that's I'm at, that's the other thing I'm going to ask up, you. Man. When you get out, I want you to make sure you message in the forum and tag us to let us know you're out. I will do that. All right, brother. All right, man. Thanks, guys. Thank take, you. Take care. That's tough. Yeah. You know, um, the the pre the discipline that the the regular exercise provides is going to be way more valuable. I yes. want just for people watching. Than the which one's going to build the most muscle, which one's going to burn the most body fat. Him starting his day off with a 15 to 20 minute structured strength training workout yeah. does set the tone for the rest of the day. It literally sets the day up with a structured discipline. I do it whether I want to or not. Mm -hmm. And that is more likely, he's more likely. He's going to benefit more from that. Yes. Just literally the structure of yes. it and the consistency That's of it. doing it. You know, so. you know, what's interesting about this, this conversation is that of course he's, he's, he's coming forward and he's admitting, admitting that he has this addiction that he's in, that he's, he's yeah. checked in for. But the truth is this is not that far different from a lot of fucking people. Yep. And a lot of people get started on this journey in pursuit of bettering themselves, and they throw the whole fucking kitchen sink at themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm going to die. I'm going to hit the pre-CAAs. I'm going to hit my creatine. I'm going to hit my protein intake. I'm going to train every single day. And then what ends up happening is they set themselves up for just way too much, way too fast. And then in, in, what ends up happening is they fall short some way or another. They're just Most people would. And they fall short, and then they 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 end up spiraling out of control because, ah, mm -hmm. fuck it. Yeah, they didn't hit one of those Ah, things. yeah, or I had two bad days in a row, or I have not this, and then but, it's, and then they, and then someone like this goes and grabs a drink, or the other people that don't have maybe an alcohol thing go fucking binge on the well, food listen, or go do can, something else. You can make anything a drug. Mm -hmm. And That's if right. you try to, if, if you try to fill whatever whole alcohol wasn't working for with fitness, <laughs> you're also going to have problems. So it's not about fitness replacing alcohol. It's just, it creates discipline structure. It allows you to become healthier. And then it hopefully, and oftentimes provides you with the resilience and strength to deal with what you need to deal with. But if you replace one addiction for another, you will end up in a bad place. And yes, we can argue whether or not fitness is a better addiction than alcohol or not. Uh, but it can also be ravage you. So, and that's what happens is they go from, they go, I'm done with alcohol or whatever. I'm going to do everything now to distract myself. I'm going to beat myself up. I'm going to yeah. run every day. I'm yeah. going to lift weights twice a day. Yep. I'm going to count every calorie type of deal. And then they end up in a, in a bad place again. Our next caller is Luke from Ohio. Luke, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Good. All right. So uh, about six years ago, I started my fitness journey. I was just doing normal strength training focused around uh, powerlifting and uh, seeing great results. I continued this journey up until about 11 months ago. I plateaued pretty hard on like all my lifts, couldn't see any gains, and I knew a change was necessary. So having little to no cardio experience, I figured an increase in cardio would be a good starting point to round out my overall fitness. And as someone who is goal-centric, I needed some sort of goal to center my cardio training around. This is when I decided to compete in my first Ironman. After completing this goal a few months ago, I once again went to start building as much strength and muscle as possible while keeping some of the cardiovascular gains I have made during my Ironman journey. Is this possible? What is the best route I should take to make serious progress in my strength gains while also being a decent endurance athlete? I like this, dude. Yeah. This, is, this is cool. Let me ask uh, a little bit more in regards to like keeping some of this, right? So mm -hmm. some is a, is, could be a wide range. Yeah, like, you define right. So uh, do you want to just have like a really good mile time still, or do you still want to just be able to throw your sneakers on and run for a half marathon? <laughs> like right. how, how yeah. much, how much endurance do you want to have? Like, how much, like how much do you care about that? Uh, as your primary and then how much do you care about packing on muscle or bu getting building strength like give me an idea of like the ratio we're looking at here so when i first started um i could really only run you know three miles without just being completely gassed so i think right now would probably if i could just throw on my sneakers and just run you know eight nine miles pretty easily um i think that would be like a good like a good two hours or so a week of you know like zone two training is kind of what i'm looking at okay um I would do a traditional strength training program. You want to build muscle. So a MAPS anabolic would be perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. And if you ran, now you want to run, be able to run what, eight to nine miles? Yeah. If you ran six miles once a week, I think you'd be able to do that. I wouldn't run nine okay. miles every week. I'd run about six. And when you feel good, push it. So you run faster. When you don't feel so good, run a little slower. But that'll yeah. keep you in striking distance of being able to run nine miles. Now with MAPS anabolic, I will add, after following that program, you're going to want to go with something a little more more mobility focused because just running 
and just maps anabolic mm. too long will probably result in some mobility issues because running is so linear. Uh, you're just running in one direction and maps anabolic is basically all in one plane, right? It, you're really getting strong, the, those foundational lifts. Mm -hmm. So after maps anabolic, I would go maps performance and continue to run, you know, six miles once a week. And that should keep you where you're at. Also keep in mind what's kind of, what's really cool about cardio is, you know, as long as you don't go the complete opposite direction, you can get that back really quick. Like, I don't, I, it sounds like you played sports. I mean, you probably remember, you know, before football, basketball, whatever you play, like you used to call it hell week, you know, and for one week, yeah. coach, I, coach ran the shit out of you. But it was crazy. By week two, you were already, I could run a full game, no problem. I could yeah. go from playing video games and eating pizza all summer with my buddies to all of a sudden, okay, hell week hits. And now I can, I can run up and down the court. That week was miserable. Mm -hmm. But then after that week, like you, you adapt cardiovascularly really quick. Yeah. So as long as you don't like massively go from like the guy who could run an Ironman to like being a couch potato and never running right. or lacing up, you'd be surprised how quickly you can get that right back. So, you know, I think just doing these, 15 to 20 minute kind of leisurely, leisurely runs one to three times no more mm -hmm. a week is enough to keep you in, in cardiovascular shape to where you you'll have, and especially too, if you follow programs like maps performance, which has like a little bit of a stamina endurance component in there that combined with that, like you, you're going to, you're going to keep pretty good cardiovascular yeah, take shape. The seasonal approach, mm -hmm. you know, like it, it, in terms of you uh, signing in and, and getting yourself involved with another competition another iron man um you know in between that like you take a few months where we're just focusing completely on strength training but you're supplementing that in between on these days uh to maintain a bit of a cardiovascular endurance but not intensively right so you're bringing that intensity down quite a bit and you're sacrificing that now and moving more on the strength side of it uh, and you just undulate those so you kind of like plan it out throughout the year based off of like what types of events you want to sign up for. And so there's nothing wrong with that. And that's basically what most athletes do anyways, is you got to account for this off season where we're putting the work in back in the body to strengthen, you know, maintain muscle mass, also keep those joints nice and fresh and ha and healthy. And so, you know, mass performance, we do need to move in different planes. We need to supplement that. So you stay strong in there. You don't have problems of this overuse and turn that into injury. Do you, do you have, have either any? one of those? Yeah. As I say, do you have any? Any? No, I do not. All right, so we'll we'll send you maps anabolic, and then after that, I would go performance. Okay, but if awesome, but yeah, yeah, once you now that you have the stamina, you, if you you maintaining it's not. I mean, you're not going to be able to maintain yeah. what you did for the Ironman, but what you said, you should be able to maintain without too much work. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that, that's awesome. That's I just don't want to lose everything I've had, and I sure. still want to meet goals like specifically um, in the strength and like in the strength world. So yeah, the, the, you know, the interesting yeah. thing about uh, performance adaptations is getting them is harder than keeping them. Yep. Uh, very true with strength training, less true with other adaptations, but there's still some truth there. So cardio is more affected by not doing as much, but still to, you know, you want to run eight, nine miles. Like if you ran, like I said, five to six miles once a week, every week, you'd be able to go nine miles and you should be fine. Mm -hmm. Easy. Okay. Yep. Cool. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks you guys. I, I really appreciate it. You got right, it, man. Right, Thanks brother. for calling in. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Did they do hell week for basketball too? Yeah. Yep. Every, really? every, every double day. Uh, yeah. We do liners and stuff. Yeah. Like, they did double days for basketball too. Yeah. Yeah. We used to, so wow. morning 6am was the, in, in cardio. And then at night we played the skill. Gosh. Yeah. So it was heavy and, condition. And you just, for uh, one, one week, loaded. one week was hardcore, you know, training. And then by the second week, you're already running up and down that court. Pretty damn good, man. Yeah. That first week is rough. It That's is rough. rough. I, so I, I didn't play obviously football or basketball, but I remember when they did hell week, I said, I'm going to do this on my own with like workouts and stuff. And it's just brutal twice yeah. a day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, kills yeah. you. I mean, when you're young like that, you're so resilient and get away Isn't with that. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Get if away I did with that one. now. <laughs> yeah. I would never do that now. And I don't think you need to do that extreme to obtain like kind of what he's no. wanting to do. I think what you gave him is that advice, which is, you know, as, as long as you can run relatively close to where you want to maintain, yeah. you're fine. Yep. And then it's literally like if you had this plan where I'm going to go for a, you know, 12, 50 mile run with my buddies in two You'll weeks. Be able like, to. Yeah. You could no literally problem. train for that. And you it, probably it, wouldn't even need to. Be yeah. To. It, well, a week or two before yep. and you'd be ready to go. Our next caller is Monica from Louis. Louisiana. Hi, Monica. How can we help you? Hey, guys. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. I'm super excited to be on the show. I listen to all your podcasts. Um, 
I actually got introduced to you guys by my husband who um, wanted to convince me that women should be eating way more than I was eating. Um, <laughs> and then also, he also um, inter- uh, had a podcast about Sal did jujitsu. Yeah. And um, I've been having some issues um, along my jujitsu journey. And I thought maybe that you guys could give me some help or information. Um, I am testing. I'm preparing for my black belt test in January. Um, it consists of a lot of hip throws and um, putting my shoulder in some weird positions. And I had an AC joint separation quite a few years back. And I never, my shoulders have never been the same since. I've always seemed to have issues with uh, my shoulders locking up on me. And it it starts with my shoulders and then it eventually goes down to my hips. So so my whole shoulder girl seems to want to tighten up and lock, lock, lock up on me. And when I'm trying to lift weights and I like doing kettlebells, I can only get to a certain point before everything starts locking up. So I'm trying to find a good balance between jujitsu and strength training. Um, um, so I can do both because I love both. I just can't seem to find the right balance between the both of them. Okay. Well, unfortunately, Sal is not qualified to answer this because he's only a purple belt. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> but but he he is because he kind of knows what yeah. your body goes through through jujitsu, right? <laughs> Actually, Are he's you, got he's got AC joint issues yeah, too, so I, he's, I, he's I more than qualified. I had that. my AC joint <laughs> sep- yeah, I separated mine in jujitsu as I was posting back, uh, you know, coming up from the bottom and then just it just separate did you get surgery on it is it is it is it is it okay now i I did not it it was a grade before surgery um so what happened was is i was doing a move my hands were locked up and when the guy went to do the reversal i landed on the mat with my neck shoulder like slammed into the mat so um they did think at one point maybe my shoulder had been fractured, but then they didn't see anything else on the X-ray, so they just said it was just my AC joint. Okay, how much uh, how much do you do jujitsu now? What's your what's your rolling schedule look like? Um, well, right now, um, it's two days a week. Um, it used to be a lot more. Um, but because I'm trying to prep for my test, I'm trying to be conscientious of putting myself in, um rolling a lot at one time so i made a do like on mondays and wednesdays three to four rolls um and obviously uh well you wouldn't know that but um everybody's bigger than me in in our class um except for my daughter (laughs) she weighs less than me but you know everybody i'm rolling with does weigh significantly you know 50 pounds more than i do yeah do you, can you do the, d- does the test require you to use both sides? Like if you do a hip thrust, a hip throw, or do you have to demonstrate it, it on both it, sides? It does not, um, but I'm right dominant. So mm-hmm. I, I've been doing everything right side, my whole jujitsu um, journey for like the last 14 years. So everything I do is on my right side, okay. even though it was my left side that um, got messed up. My right side also gives me problems. Okay. So I, I, the the perfect program for you um, is Map Symmetry, and I think Map Symmetry is going to help you a lot. Not mainly because of the unilateral work, but also more precisely because of the first phase of isometric work. Isometric work is going to improve your stability in your shoulder, which is what you're lacking right now. Okay, and I would move away from the kettlebells for a bit until okay. you really start to balance things out because kettlebells are great. For building stability, but if you're really unstable, it can be really tough because of the, the way the weight is kind of offset. Okay. Whereas bal- dumbbells are a little bit more balanced. So I would go map symmetry okay. with her rolling. How much, how many times? It well, would- I was going to say, so with map, sym- with map symmetry, that first phase is only two weeks. I want you to do that for okay. four to six weeks and it's going to look boring okay. because it's all isometric based. Okay. So it's not okay. full on strength training, but that's okay. I would do it for about four or five weeks. And then when everything starts to feel good, then progress through the program. Now, along with jujitsu, which is twice a week, which you've probably been doing for a long time, probably more than twice a week, right? You've been doing this for 13 years? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I used to do uh, way more training, like yeah. probably five times a week. Yeah, you're fine. And I mean, as I'm, obviously, as I've gotten older too, my body can just can't sustain rolling two hour open max anymore with people way bigger than me. Yeah, I would, I would go, I would follow map symmetry. Like it's laid out. You'll be totally fine. The only thing I would do is I would make sure that you don't go too hard on the workouts. So bring the intensity down. Okay. But so phase one, extend that for about four to six weeks. Okay. Okay. When you get to phase two and beyond, then just keep the intensity moderate at most and maintain the rolling and you should be totally fine. The only thing that I would add to that is just the the mindset that you go into map symmetry is, uh, is like perfecting the movement, Uh, like technique. Yeah. Think of it like an art form and the beauty of of it like jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and the beauty of the movement, right. Versus, Oh, I I can do more weight. Just add more weight. Oh, I can do more weight. Just add more weight. You're trying to make that right and left side intrinsic look identical and move the same way. And, 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 and if it's, even if you have enough strength to increase weight, but you can see in the mirror when you're doing the exercise, like, Oh, it just doesn't look as perfect as the left side or vice versa. Like that should be the, at the pinnacle of yep. like you move progressing and moving through the program is trying to perfect the movement on each side more than it is, you know, can I push harder or less right. rest or add more weight? Now, while doing this, I do think you need to bump your calories at the same time. If you just add this and you don't increase your calories, you may find yourself burning out. So I would bump your calories well, by about three to 500. Go ahead. Okay, I um right now I am counting my macros. Um, it had me set at two thousand calories a day. Um, but I I do I'm not gonna lie I have issues with um weight. Um, I guess as most women do, we all yeah at one point when we were younger all wanted to be super skinny. Yeah, and that my body type obviously isn't that. Um, I will never be a twig. So when I go to think of eating more food, it, it overwhelms me. I, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I tell you what, it's a practice. I want you to take your scale and throw it away. I don't want you <laughs> no, serious. Don't weigh yourself anymore. Here's how you're going to judge your diet. How strong do I feel working out? How good do I feel in jujitsu? Right. Okay. Fo- literally place your focus there. When you find yourself wanting to look in the mirror and focus on the mirror or wanting to weigh yourself, focus on strength. It is a wonderful way to distract yourself from the, from the, the tyranny of weight and appearance, and it will move you in a much better direction. So I want you to keep your calories a a little bit above 2000. And I want you to do that consistently follow map symmetry. Like I, like I told you and, and keep and just focus on performance because here's what you're going to notice. You're going to be stronger. You're going to feel more energy. You're going to have less inflammation. And you'll probably solve your shoulder pain and hip pain probably by the fourth or fifth week of map symmetry. Okay. Okay. Yep. And I think that's where I, I went wrong in my journey as well. Um, I was eating way less and requiring my body to do a lot more than I was feeding it. Yeah. So I think at one point I was over training and under eating. Sure. And like I said, it wasn't until my husband gave me um, the podcast with you guys talking about how women should be eating more was it was kind of a light bulb that maybe, you know, when I started looking that I was only eating 900 calories a day and my body's Mm -hmm. burning 18, like it just, Yep. It was kind of mind blowing for me. And you guys are the, one of the reasons why I started counting macros. And we actually got my son to start counting macros too, because he's a teenage boy and he wants to eat everything. And we're trying to tell him not to eat all this stuff, but now he's counting macros. So he's keeping it in his macros and he's a happy, he's a happy teenager. Yeah. So thank yeah. you guys for that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Focus right on up. performance, Monica. It will guide you in the right way. It will guide you okay. in the right way. If you look at the scale, it's going to tyrannize you. I promise. So take that scale and toss it out. I I swear to God, don't even weigh yourself and you'll find yourself in a much better place. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Thank you, Monica. Thank you guys. Oh, and we're going to send you map symmetry, by the way, unless, uh, unless. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah, you got it. All right. So, and when I do a test and hopefully receive my bike belt, I will send you guys a picture. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Thanks a bunch guys. Thanks.
Bye. Yeah. So with black, when you get to black belt, you, 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 especially once you're a black belt, they want you proficient. Everybody has a side, a favorite side as you mm-hmm. go through jujitsu, like you'll do a move and you'll be better on one side than the other. Yeah. But once you get to black belt, you need to be able to do, that's what, what they want. They want well, you to be able to all, do both sides. Yeah, what yeah. martial art is it where you have, you like, you have to take on a guy, then take on another guy, then take on another guy. Isn't there one where you have to do <laughs> it's like, like a keto? Is, it, is there, is there one where you have to do like one, one guy comes uh, after you. Then you have I don't to think it's a specific martial art. It might be a school. Oh. That makes you that. But jujitsu is interesting. It's funny that they're testing. Typically, Brazilian jiu jitsu doesn't test. What they'll do is they'll watch you train and if you compete mm. and then time how long you've been doing oh, it. Oh, interesting. Uh-huh. Yeah, That's how like, that works. Jiu jitsu is performance based. That's why it yeah. takes so long to get a belt. It's we like, also have to like teach, right? At some point, you don't yeah. have to. I mean, they, once they you get perf- to purple oh, okay. belt, they want you to start helping and teaching. So, mm-hmm. purple and up will typically teach a class, but. Now that seems kind of weird. It's very subjective then. So somebody else yep. just watching yeah. you goes, Oh, yeah, you the, know what? You're a, you're a purple belt. Yeah. Now. And in there, well, see, jujitsu has gotten so popular now, but, but before it got so popular, it was like, you know, getting your black belt was like, you had to be able to kick someone's ass or otherwise they're not going to give it to you. Sure. Whereas other martial arts are like, yeah, year four, you're guaranteed to get a black belt. So long as you show up, jujitsu is like, I don't give a shit if you show up every day. Yeah. <laughs> if you suck and you keep getting yeah, your ass kicked. Taekwondo crack, is a lot like that. Yes. It's just like, oh, here's the next belt. Yeah. Here's the next Well, belt. they have like, a lot of belts as a result because they yeah. know every two or three months if they give a kid a belt, yeah. they're motivated. Jujitsu is yeah. literally white, blue, purple, brown, black. That's it. Mm-hmm. And it's like a years to get from one to the other. It takes mm-hmm. years. So yeah. it's typically you compete or you're really showing proficiency in the class. And then the coach is like, I think you're ready. It also makes sense then why there's so much uh, pride. And I think why it's so popular now, because it's, it's probably coveted more to be able to achieve a black belt. You know how many MMA fighters don't mm-hmm. have a black belt who, who are amazing at jujitsu just because they, they do it no gi or they train MMA. And they'll go back. You'll hear us all the time. Like, so-and-so, middleweight champion, just got his black belt. You're like, what? He's, he wasn't even a black belt? <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, so so purple belt's very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> you could basically win any MMA match. <laughs> uh, all, right. all right. Our next caller is Megan from Arkansas. Hi, Megan. How can we help you? Hi. Thanks for all the content that you guys put out, obviously, um, and for taking my question. Um, my question primarily relates to transitioning from competition prep and just being really stringent to everyday life. Um, so I spent 16 weeks in a prep. Um, I'm 31 years old. I have a three-year-old daughter and um, I'm married. And I ultimately did not step on stage because my daughter told me I was no longer fun. <laughs> oh. So I didn't feel like the ROI with competing um it just wasn't there. Like family comes first for me. Um, but I had a really hard time with my reverse. Um, and one, I just felt like really hungry, even though I was eating more calories. Like I felt hungrier eating more than I did when I was eating like 1300 calories, um, at 1600 calories. And, um, ultimately I, I just wasn't able to stick to the reverse is what ended up happening. So I just didn't know if you guys had any advice there. Where are we at right now? So you you were at thirteen hundred, at sixteen hundred. You felt like you were just getting hungrier. Like, do you know where you're kind of landing right now? What, what, what are we looking like? I spent like a month, probably just not tracking at all. Okay. Um. So you can imagine a lot of binge eating episodes and things like that that happens with a first time competitor. Even though I didn't end up being on stage, um, I so I thought I could handle doing the reverse on my own. Um, and so I fired my coach. That was a terrible idea in hindsight, <laughs> um, but I've hired her back on to kind of just get back into a good routine. Um, and she has me at just under 2000 calories. Did, are, have you guys eliminated the cardio or are you doing cardio still too? I wanted to keep my cardio because I begged my husband for a Peloton. And so I'm trying to prevent him from calling it a paperweight. <laughs> so I do 20 <laughs> minutes, um, four times a week. Okay. Okay. So w- what's more important to you winning the argument with your husband over the Peloton <laughs> or what's best or getting help or being healthy? <laughs> what's, what's more important to you? Uh, I mean, I like the Peloton and 20 minutes is good because it's a five minute warm up and then 15 minutes of actual work. So I, I don't mind the cardio. Um, and I like the cardiovascular and I do it in the morning and it will wake me up those kind of things. So well, also- it is partly to win. Against my husband, but also I do like the cardio. Also, keep in mind what I mean. The way the card, the question started was more about your metabolism, right? I mean, that's basically what you're asking. And so, 
it doesn't mean that we can't do the cardio or that eventually it's not something that we add into your routine, but it's not making it, uh, it's not helping. It's not helping the goal. So if the goal is to get you metabolically healthy and get you at a calorie intake that's sustainable, that you feel good at, that you feel strong in, that you're at a body fat percentage that you feel healthy and stuff that is not helping right now. So it's working against that right now. The goal should be to build muscle, build strength, slowly increase calories in the diet. And I would do that by not doing any cardio at first. It would literally be... You'll do it again later. Yeah, that's fine. Like if you like doing it and you, as you admitted, I would say, okay, cool, we'll get there. And that'll be a good goal. A good goal will be, let's get your your metabolic rate up. Let's get you to a, a good place with good balance of strength training, say three days a week and you're eating a good amount of calories and feeling good with no cardio, and then I'm going to bump your calories again, and then I'm going to introduce the cardio that you want to maintain and sustain. But right now, there's it's uh, it's not helping us at all. So I would make you drop it, and then I would want to know where the calories are. I'd put you on something like MAPS Anabolic and slowly increase calories every couple weeks. Yeah, I would, I would really focus on just getting strong right now. That's going to be your best weapon against kind of the metabolic, I don't know, for lack of a better term, damage that might've been caused, uh, from the prep, the, the, the getting hungrier with higher calories, body uh, telling you starving. Well, it's, there's a huge psychological component that is, that plays a role with hunger. It's very big. This is how in extreme cases, anorexics can tell you they don't feel hungry, even though they're literally starving themselves to death. When you're in prep, you 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 can shift into this mental state where you're just hyper focused. Then when you come out of it, you lose that that goal, that focus, and now it feels like almost like the reins are off. Like, oh, I can, oh, oh, now I'm feeling what I normally was feeling before that I might have disassociated from or detached from at the time. So it's not a bad thing. It's just you're more in touch with your feelings. You're more in touch with what your body's telling you. Um, but yeah, you need to focus purely on strength training right now. I would eliminate the cardio. You can walk. That's, there's nothing wrong with walking, but I wouldn't do the Peloton stuff. And that's MAPS anabolic. Um, once you get your calories up to a point where you feel really strong and healthy, then we can reintroduce the cardio a little bit. But I think where you're at now with your calories, that's where I would keep them. Cut the, cut the cardio first. Then maybe in a couple of weeks, I would slowly bump it by maybe 100 calories to 200 calories a week and just see how you feel. And really just gauge your strength. Really just look at how strong you are and what your performance feels like. Are you? Did you notice any um, hormonal effects from prep? Not really, just because I, I mean, it was only 16 weeks, which I guess I say only, but um, I I wasn't experiencing any of that. Okay, that's, good. That's, that's really I was good. just, I was tired. But that's okay. That's where, really good. Where and you are, you're tracking again right now. So where are your calories now? I didn't hear what you said. Uh, it's at 1970. So just under 2000. Okay. okay. And you're, what's and your body fat yeah, percentage? Yeah, Cause yeah. you look pretty lean. Um, I would guess I'm about 19, uh, probably about 20%, maybe low twenties. You're good. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in a good, yeah. we're, we're in a, we're in a, a good place. You're in a really good place. Yeah. Would you, would you be interested in a, in a, in a like a strength focus program, like where you're doing like maps power lift, where the goal is, because if you have trouble moving from one really specific goal, like competition, sometimes it helps to be like, well, now I'm going to follow a program where it's very direct. Like I'm just going to get stronger at the bench press, the deadlift and the squat. And that sometimes helps with that psychological transfer. Would that be something yeah. you're interested? I, I thought about transitioning into more of like a, Potentially doing powerlift competitions okay. versus Done like deal. we're sure. gonna have you do maps powerlift then. Yeah, yeah. I'm and gonna send you maps powerlift. Okay. Yeah, and you don't need to get into a competition unless you want to. If you want would, to, it'd be great. Right. It's a very supportive but, community. It's very different than bodybuilding or. But I love bikini, that. But, I love that advice. Yes, and that and the and the goal right now is literally like all I'd want you focused on is to let's get stronger and That's let's it. slowly increase those calories. So a massive win is can we say in three to four weeks from now have eliminated the the peloton and actually been able to bump the calories somewhat and you've seen strength go up and you don't feel like you've put on much body fat at all like that is like the that's the that's goal right. that's the main goal right now and even if you do put a little bit of body fat on i just don't want to see a major swing right so i don't want to bump your calories to where you feel like you're putting body fat on week over week if we do a good job 
those extra calories will get partitioned over a building muscle because you're sending a loud signal yeah. with MAPS Power Lift. Do you have um, advice on having that conversation with a coach of, hey, so I've received this um, programming yeah. that I would like to are they giving you a workout? versus the programming you're providing. Are they giving yeah. you a workout too? They're giving me a workout. They give me my, my, a workout and macros. Okay. Yeah. How much have you, how, are you like locked in? Did you pay for this for an extended period of time? Or it's, you, it's month to month. I mean, then, I mean, you could just say, hey, I'd like to just focus on nutrition with you. I'm following Mind Pump's MAPS Powerlift program. If they're a good coach, they'll know, they'll know who we are and they should. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they probably will respect our programming. If they're not familiar, send them the program and show them and say, this is a powerlifting program. I got it from this podcast called Mind Pump and I'd like to follow this and I would like for you to help me with the reverse diet part and yeah. not the workout. <laughs> That's very optimistic thinking. Yeah. Well, I let's doubt. see. Let's so, see what they say. But most trainers have got a massive ego and th and uh, have <laughs> a bit of a God complex. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes for you. You might have to just tough it out for a, a, a month and and just you know uh, use them for what they can help you with and then transition to what we're telling you because – you might get into this back and forth of them trying. I mean, essentially you're asking them to just do the diet and not the workout in the yeah. diet and you're going to pay them the same amount. So they might be okay with that. Yeah, they might. They might. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. So it'd be interesting. To, I, I'm actually, have you ever asked them? Do they listen to the show? Do you know if they're familiar with Mind Pump at all? I haven't asked them. Um, I think she primarily works with competition clients. I mean, she has lifestyle clients, but. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, but stage sure. presentation, not power lift, not power lifting clients. Yeah. Oh, she doesn't know um, how to. I'm in the forum, so I'll be able to follow up and let you know. Oh, yeah, okay. let us know. Because okay, she cool. can't, if she, if she does stage competition workouts, she doesn't know how to write programming for powerlifting. It's very different. So that, that might be enough for her to be like, okay, cool, you follow that. But yeah, let us know what happens. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Thank cool. you guys. Thank well, you, Megan. We'll send that to you. Yeah, okay? we'll see you in the forum, Megan. All right. Thanks. All right, Bye. Bye. Record. Yeah, the um, yeah, you're pretty optimistic about that. Uh, well, we'll, <laughs> well, hey, listen, I'm optimistic that our coach knows who we are. And at the very least, either they respect what we say or they fear the fact that we'll sh give them a shout out. <laughs> if they don't, <laughs> if they don't do you know? But, yeah, I know. Uh, I love the competitors we get to like shift over into power lift. Yeah, and think dude. In that direction. Come it's on, like, man. it's such a healthy. Listen, uh, she, if she was compete, if transition. she was training for a powerlifting competition, she probably would not have been in the position where her daughter hey, says, listen, Mommy, for, you're not fun. For the coaches like, and, that dieting for coaches so and trainers that are listening to this, um, this is a this is a this would be a cool trend to start in that space. Totally. Right? Is when you get every any competitor that finishes a show and they're done with a show and they're getting out and, and they need to do something. And they need yeah, to do something to put on is like lift. switch everything. You're switching their mindset to let's go and don't think that's going to lose traction towards their body sculpting goal. Right. It'll or, help. Yeah. It'll only improve that. Yep. It's just a good shift to okay, let's get out of this, like, you know, cutting and sculpting the body. It's like, let's go get strong. Let's increase calories and, and, and focus on the yeah. metabolism. Like that's going to benefit pure build them. focus. Yeah. But when she was like, oh, I'm just doing it so that my husband doesn't say, I told you so. I'm like, it's, <laughs> yes. it's worth it to let him win that yeah. one. Yes. Yes. Okay. You must be a joy to argue with. <laughs> and, and Good there's times. also going to be some people that probably push back on that uh, advice, but it's, and it's not that uh, one that I wouldn't allow her to do that in the future. Uh, right. And it's not two that she couldn't possibly do it. Why also doing it? It's like, why, yeah. why though? Why if add it's more not, stress to the body? If it's why, not why? have any little deterrence, that's, if it's not going to metabolically support us and help us right now. Okay. Which again, that's going to get people to, Oh, you know, here with study. Uh, if it, if it doesn't help that journey right now, then I would put it aside for the moment until we get to a place where and and this is for all people too. Like you want to know what uh, a week or three weeks of eating a certain way and not doing any sort of cardio looks like for you as That's far right. as what you need. That's right. That way, when you decide you're going to add these things, you know how you should adjust the calories based off of that, and so you don't get into what happens to a lot of people, which is overtraining and grossly under eating and then not getting any results at all. So look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. Download them. They'll help you. You can also find us on social media. Justin is at uh, Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. I'm at Mind Pump to Stefano on Instagram and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. You guessed it on Instagram.